Oh, times have been tough for the old wizard. Inflation is high and I've had to put in extra effort locating more precious money. So I've decided to take applications for, well, a roommate to help out with the bills, and this was my only applicant, a dragon. He seems alright, but he's a lot to handle. Always leaves a mess around the house, and damn it all, if I have to clean another one of his dishes, I'm gonna cast a level 9 spell on his scaly behind. Oh, what is a wizard to do? Hello folks and welcome to Dice Chatter. My name is Donnie and today I'll show you how I built this old abandoned mine entrance that you can use in your tabletop games. They call it a mine! I could see myself using this piece of terrain in some Dungeons and Dragons, Frostgrave, or maybe even some Age of Sigmar. So enough dilly dally, let's get right into the build. While I go through these initial steps that you all have seen in previous builds, you know, gluing foam together and carving away at this pink monstrosity to make it look like a reasonable rock, I wanted to chat about what this terrain piece is for. The intention of this build is to not be the big centerpiece that sits in the middle of the table, the one where warriors and mages alike will clash in battle. I wanted to focus on the more neglected part of the table, the corner. The corner of the tabletop is a sad place. No models reside here. The land is vacant and usually a rule book or tape measure sits here waiting to be read and fondled by your unexpected Cheeto fingers. But today we will slowly be solving that problem. This mine entrance will have 90% of its focus and details on the front facing side while the back side will be mostly neglected. <laughs> Uh, anywho, once we reach the end product, you'll get a pretty decent idea of what I'm talking about. Alright, let's get back onto the build. Once I'm generally happy with the overall look of this big pink rock, I lather this bad boy up with some spackle. I've done this numerous times at this point over a handful of terrain builds, and I really enjoy the details this step provides. And in addition to the details, it also gives some needed strength and weight to the mine entrance. The key to this is not to just slap it on and then move on to the next step. You just gotta make sure to apply a thin coat over the entire build, adding a bit of water into the mix here and there to get good coverage. While the spackle on the rock dries, I wanted to try out a new material for this build because I was getting a little sick of foam shavings just being all over the place. I wanted to build the wood beams, well, out of wood. I used some soft balsa wood for all the wood sections of this build, and I will say I actually really enjoy this stuff. It's super easy to cut, scratch up, and give some extra details to these wooden sections. I also wanted to attempt to add in a flickering light that is present at the main entrance of the mine. I ripped apart a few tea lights and gathered up some soldering wire so that I could create a longer connection to the battery that powers up this tiny addition. At this point in time, I am doing a little experimenting for myself, and you'll see later in the building process me completing the finishing touches on the lantern and the balsa wood as well. Alright, it's been a few minutes. Now that the spackle is dry, I made a nice sloppy mixture of glue, play sand mix, and a little bit of water. I slapped this mixture around the build, but not every single part of the rock. I just threw it on areas where I felt like I wanted more detail or some of the pink foam was still showing through. Once this step was done, I coated the entire terrain piece with your standard Mod Podge and black paint mixture, went ahead and ran outside and spray primed the entire thing black. At this time, we are ready to take all that balsa wood we scratched and scoured up and start making an interesting and dilapidated entrance. I peeked at a few images online to get a general idea of what some old mine entrances looked like. Essentially, the main thing you need to know is that there needs to be three main beams, one on top horizontally, and one on each side to give the roof support. You know, so that it doesn't collapse on an unsuspecting head. I just used hot glue to attach the beams to the big black rock, and once this step was complete, we can now move on to painting. Painting here was pretty simple. Work in grays for the rock, and add in a couple other colors to mix things up. Some browns, tans, and greens also go a long way to add more interest to the color scheme. I'm also using cheap dollar store makeup brushes for the painting process, and when I feel more detail is needed, I'll switch over to your standard thin brush. 
For the wooden beams, we went with some brown, gray, and some beige to give it a rotted look to make this mine entrance look that much more old and spooky. Surprisingly to me, the painting process was actually one of the faster steps in this build and always makes your terrain crafting go from questionable to pleasantly decent. Once all the paint was dried, I wanted to spice the build up and went through my basing box. I gathered up some coconut fiber, flocking, static grass, and whatever green foliage junk I could find and glued it on near and around the mine entrance. No real method to my madness here, just add as little or as much as you want. In this instance, I wanted this mine entrance to be located in a temperate biome, maybe a forest, a grassy field, or placed on a mountainside. Your choices are endless. The final step in the build was figuring out how to attach this little tiny tea light to the entrance. I also wanted the tea light to look like an old lantern. I found some very thin black wire I had lying around and cut tiny little segments and super glued them to the light. This step was very finicky and uh, annoying, but with a little patience and determination the lantern came out pretty well. I did the best that I could by running the excess wire through the side of the mine entrance and out the bottom where the battery and the important connections would reside. This also was a little tedious, but it worked out well. And with that, the build is finally complete. I will say, for not crafting a single piece of terrain in, what, nearly two years, I was pretty proud of this one. I tried out a few new materials and a couple new tactics that even surprised little old me. Overall, I am happy with the final product and I am looking forward to dabbling back into building terrain for the tabletop. If you all enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and do all the other socials. I appreciate all of you and look forward to reading your inspiring comments. Until next time, folks, I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.